Okay, back again. We're getting into now the next synonym, Numfias, which means bridegroom. And the distance between it and this occurrence of Hokurias is divisible by 7 when you do the map. So it's intended as a synonym, even though in the text you just automatically or should automatically know it's a synonym. But there's something really important about this. Besides the fact that it's the secular ruler now rebelling against the Bible, trying to be your Lord instead, and the people rejecting his claim to do that, the other thing that was really important about this particular period is that 1640, which this represents, is the very first publication in the United States of any printed book. And what was that book? This is where I start to get real weirded out, but I can't afford to do that. The very first printed book in the United States, which I showed in previous videos, is a meter translation of the Psalms. Now think about that. Of all the books that they could first print in the United States, it's not a dictionary, it's not an almanac, it's a metrical translation of the Psalms from the trying to repeat the actual Hebrew syllable counts into English words. That was published in Massachusetts in 1640. I already showed you the video on that. I do not have the text online that I can show it to you. I don't know how I'm going to get that. That was occurring at the very same time in the United States as is occurring with the rebelling of the people against their own ruler in order to worship and read the Bible their own way. You see how important that is? It's now tying the United States into it as a meter translation of all the books that could be the first published in the United States. It's a metered translation of the Psalms trying to translate into English words using the same syllable counts as the Hebrew Psalms. People wanted that. There was a market for that book to be the first one published in Massachusetts. It was the very first pub published book in the United States. That's pretty significant, don't you think? So now when you get down here to Numphias, the very first occurrence of the word, divisible by seven later, you shouldn't be too surprised at the irony of it. Because what is the irony of this? This is standing for 1748 and 1749. That, my dear, was the War of the Austrian Succession, which was about who was supposed to be the husband of the Holy Roman Empire. Do you think Christ is being, you know, Matthew packaging what Christ said? Do you think this could be more wry, more satirical, more apt, especially in light of what was happening here before in England and in the United States in 1640? Huh? 1748-1749. By a hundred years later, the actual secular war that you can look up on Google is called the War of the Austrian Succession and it was all due to the fact that the Holy Roman Emperor hit a guy died and his daughter is to inherit the throne so now the battle the war was over who gets to marry her or who gets to take the, the dead rulers place because she's female so who's going to husband the Holy Roman Empire? Again, another secular ruler. It ends up becoming a religious war. Again, over who gets to speak for God. And that's the husband. Getting this? Now, it just so happens that in 1748 and 1749, I already showed the video on this, Somebody in the United States, or I'm not sure, it might have been Britain, produces what he considers to be a metrical translation, not this time of the Psalms, but of the last words of David, which are in Hebrew in 2 Samuel 23, and they are metered, 
and they are metered for David's age at death at age 77, which the scholars even today do not know because they don't read the Bible properly. You can learn that David was age 77 when he died by looking at 1 Kings 6.1. That's how I learned it before I knew of the Bible meter. But they don't read it right. They don't even use the Bible. They use Josephus, who wrongly says that David died at 70. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he retired at 70. And then 1 Chronicles 22-29, through 29, one year per chapter. And the chapter markers are actually in the Hebrew. Uh, one year per chapter, he spends the next seven years setting up the temple for his son to, you know, actually build after he's dead. But Solomon doesn't build the temple after David dies. He waits an additional three years. And that's why in 1 Kings 6, 1, it says in the fourth year of Solomon, meaning the fourth year after David died. The fourth year after David died is the 480th year of the Exodus. So it's real obvious he died at 77. I don't know why the scholars don't bother to actually read it. They think 1 Kings 6, 1 is wrong. They don't bother to read the first six chapters, and they don't bother to read 1 Chronicles 22 through 29. So you don't need the meter to know that. But it just so happens that in this very year, a meter translation is produced of the last words of David. Now, I've got, you can order a copy of that translation, meter translation, in Amazon. I haven't ordered it yet. I just went to look at the Hebrew of 2 Samuel 23, and I counted the syllables myself, and the first time it's sevens is at 77, which is David's age when he writes the words. Okay? That's his date line. Hi, I'm 77 when I write this. He's a king. He should date it in terms of his kingship. So the 77th rule since he was born, he's king. He's writing his last words. And what is David? The husband of Israel. And what does he stand for? The future husband of the world, namely Christ, right here depicted as Tonumfu. And we know it's Christ because this is the kingdom of heaven. And then he's making a parable to ten virgins. Virgins would be brides, correct? It's not ten bridesmaids, it's ten virgins. This word here means virgin. So it would be for a harem. Bride of Christ, we're all a harem for Christ, and he's the bridegroom. You see all this word play? And it's got the tie to the secular play on who's going to husband. All right, now that's the setup for our boy Trump. Because you got a secular ruler. We've moved to the United States. Okay, we made that, that move was made right here. The linking between the United States and Britain was made right here. And because of the war of the Austrian succession, a whole bunch of people moved to the United States. And this is when the United States is really getting cranked up. A large measure due to the war of Austrian succession because people don't want to mess with the Protestants versus the Catholic. Just let me go to the United States. They weren't the United States at those point. Let me go to the colonies. Get away from the continent. Get away from England. Learn Bible on my own. I want my own husband, my word of God, to husband me. And the whole United States was founded on that. Separation of church and state. You worship the way you want to worship. Okay? So your husband is who you say it is. Okay, but who are you going to say it is? Here, there's an argument over who's going to husband the Holy Roman Empire. Here, there was an argument over who's going to husband your right to learn Bible. And a lot of people left England as a result of that. Came to the United States, and here in the United States, we've by now had our first metrical and possibly second metrical translation, this time 2 Samuel 23, of the husband of Israel, who's a precursor to the husband of the world, writing his last words. Do you see the wit here? Do you see the satire? Who's going to husband you? Politically and faith-wise. And it's a battle. 
because the secular rulers want to use religion in order to gain political power over you. And that's what Matthew 25 with the ten virgins is all about. Because the second time Numphias is used, we're talking about the War of 1812. And that gave birth, of course, to more wars over religion. The third time it's used. Okay, same kind of problem, except now we're really starting to focus on the United States. Okay? And it just keeps on going from here. Here's Numphias again. Alright, only this time it's in our time. That's 1976. This is about the coming of the Numphias. In the United States, by 1976, there was a lot of good Bible teaching. Prior, here, in 1748 and 9, 1818 through 21, and especially here in the early 1800s, this is by 18, 8, 1844 with Tischendorf, we're finding Bible manuscripts, there's Bible teaching coming out, there are whole universities like Harvard and Yale and Stanford, well not Stanford, Harvard and Yale and the back east colleges. They're all formed in order to teach Bible. I don't know if you realize that. Their whole forming and foundation was to teach Bible, to make it available. Everybody was reading the Bible in the Greek and the Hebrew in those days. Okay, it was common. And they were finding new manuscripts and making new translations as a result of those manuscripts. That was all the rage in primarily the United States, but also in Europe. They were finding the manuscripts in Europe. But they were doing a lot with those manuscripts in the United States. So that's what this whole thing is about. By this point, there is a turning point in the teaching. This is about its height. So that's why this is such a good number. 91 times 3. But unfortunately, there's another trend. Again, this is the satirical idea of who's going to husband you? Do you have political power? Do you go for a political husband or a spiritual husband? <coughs> okay. Beginning right here, this is 1960. Going all the way to our time right here, that's 2017. There was a specific counter trend that happened in the United States in church to <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me to reject our real husband in favor of a political husband that started with Jerry Falwell and the silent majority okay he wanted to buy something else. The Bible wasn't good enough for him anymore. And all the preachers that are now famous on TV. Pat Robertson and all those other jerks. They all started following suit. Oh yeah, politics. Let's have politics be our husband. We don't want the real God. We want politics. And that's what culminated in Trump right now. That's how come we're where we are now. <coughs> See? I mean, you're going to want to do your research to verify what I'm telling you about these uses of Numphias. But you know what the syllable counts are, you can look up the years. This is why we're getting where we're getting here in 2017. Ann Coulter wrote a book, In Trump We Trust. I don't know if it gets more obvious than that. You got the whole Seven Mountains sect of Christianity. Sarah Palin, Pat Robertson, James Dobson, Ted Cruz, all those guys back in Trump. As God. I, you know, I mean, have you not been paying attention to the news? They're treating him like God appointed him. Just look up Lance Wall now in uh, YouTube. James Dobson. All those guys are backing Trump. 
write in um, Google search on Donald Trump anointed Ted Cruz anointed to the same in YouTube and you'll find videos on these people saying oh you know and then there's this whole organization called right wing watch which frequently publishes statements by all these apostate Christians trying to say that Trump is the Lord's anointed you see how satirical that is because they reject the real bridegroom and oh by the way the real bridegroom actually came right here in other words, we got real Bible teaching and it got rejected. So now that he comes, he takes the wise virgins in with him and he shuts the door. That's 1998. My pastor started teaching that in 1998. He didn't know the meter. He just knew that there was some kind of door that got shut on Bible teaching. And that the next 40 years were going to be really bad. He didn't know this meter. I'm pretty sure that's why I got it. In order to, you know, like, how come he said what he said back in 98? Because it just really rocked the church to hear that. Why did he say that? Well, here's your verse to prove it. And all these prior uses of Kurios and Numphios. And see, here's the next occurrence of Kurios. And it's divisible by seven versus this. See where I'm getting it from? And then, of course, we got our next down in Lego Humin coming up. Now, there are more occurrences of Koryas after this. See? We're now in Matthew 25, 11, which is what I've been talking about now. This is 2017. Right here. I can't mark it. Bible Works is not good about this. Okay. Alright. And then it again occurs in Matthew 25, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 37. It goes all the way to the end of Matthew 25, 44. So it comes up a lot. What does that tell you? First thing it should tell you is, okay, there is a politicization against Christ. Okay, because that theme got established way back here at the beginning between the last occurrence, which was 1640, long parliament abuse by Charles I being rejected by the people who wanted God instead. Now we get into who's your husband, pregnantly and precisely arranged in the word order because in Greek the word order doesn't matter that much he didn't need to put it there in that order but by putting it in that order that alerts us to all oh, the war of Austrian succession which was precisely about who was going to be the husband at precisely the time of course God would foreknow that then a metrical translation of David's last words comes out and every single occurrence of Numphios after that is about Bible finds, Bible manuscripts finds, Bible teaching finds. I mean, there was a massive revolution in Bible teaching and understanding starting here. Massive. This is like the golden age of Bible teaching. A lot of the lexicons that you're going to be using when you go to study the Greek or whatever are from this period. Okay? It reaches its peak and turns sour. Starting here is where the counter trend begins, but the good teaching is still going on. It reaches its peak here, and then the door gets closed on it with the wise ones. And then you got the unwise ones, the foolish ones, with the Falwell, because, you know, Jerry Falwell Jr. supports Donald Trump, all wanting to reverse, just like Charles wanted to reverse, and put the Bible in their, their mouths. They're going to be the Lord for you. Well, that's wrong. So, God's going to answer. I don't know you. But it's going to take between now and 2041 for him to do that. Because it's called grace before judgment. So you see, that's why this interpretation against Trump is so valid. Alright, the other thing that's, that's important about it, and this is what's kind of freaking me out here 
is this means there's another Bible find, another major Bible find from 2015 to 2018 taking place. And my natural question is, oh, then maybe it's the meter. Maybe that's another reason why I know this meter. Well, if so, then somebody with credentials after his name is going to be coming up with it. Because I don't have credentials, so nobody's going to listen to me. But you can count the syllables yourself and still see it's true, but people won't listen until somebody with credentials after his name puts his name on it. So that will be the counter trend to the nasty trend of the politicizing Christians who want to do what Charles did back in 1640. They're trying to do it now with their vile, stupid, disgusting, pro-life crap. That's where we are now historically. And somewhere along the line it means that there's a new Bible discovery coming up. It could be new manuscripts. It could be the meter. Because the meter makes this kind of difference and it's pretty important, don't you think? So now you know where I'm getting it from. Peace out.